Here we're going to talk about building a floating floor. The idea is to prevent the vibration going down in the floor through the construction, uh, through the concrete and into the other part of the building and for example the neighbors where the vibrations can transmit to acoustical noise. In this case the noise source is going to be a milling machine with uh, frequencies mostly about 100 Hz. But uh, you can use this uh, technique with a floating floor, for example, in a sound studio for drums and, and so on. But uh, then I would suggest some changes doing that with more low frequency noise. But uh, I will come to that later. Here we have some uh, rubber likely material called uh, vibrafoam to absorb and isolate the vibration. It's uh, 25 millimeters thick and uh, there are similar materials called uh, pseudomere uh, doing the same work. It's a low budget movie this. I have no cameraman, so I have to move up and down. Let's quit uh, talking now and start building. Uh, the first thing is to build a frame with uh, wooden joists. 45 uh, twice 70 millimeters is used here. And uh, of course, the angle should be 90 degree no high tech here Board uh, to be used uh, later on is uh, 1800 millimeters long, so uh, we put some uh, shorter joists here to support the uh, shipboard. Now it's uh, time for the blocks of uh, vibrafoam. It's uh, 25 millimeters uh, thick, and uh, we're using uh, 25 of them here. Then uh, we're going to need some uh, fuel uh, to further continue building here. And uh, if you don't like uh, theory, uh, you can just jump uh, two minutes ahead or something. It is uh, very important to properly choose and dimension your vibration isolators. Otherwise, your floating floor won't work. You will need some um, data from your supplier of the isolator. And uh, the first thing you need is the max static load. And uh, it tells you how much uh, weight your, your floor can, can take before it's, it's not working anymore of, uh, or uh, if 
you're unlucky, you're isolated, you'll, you'll break. Uh, here the static uh, max load is uh, 0.170 newton per square meter. Uh, the other data you need is the dynamic E module or Young's uh, module. Here it is 2.27 uh, newter newton per square meter. Then you have to figure out how much mass uh, you will have on your isolator. Uh, it's the, the weight from the floor and everything that stands on the floor, including people. In this example it's 29 kilogram, and uh, we will use uh, 25 uh, cubic isolators. So the total weight on the floor will be 720 kilograms. Take your mass uh, here, uh, 29 kilograms, and uh, multiply it with uh, 10 to get uh, the force in Newton, uh, the, the gravity constant, and uh, divide it with the length and the width of the isolator. It's uh, the length is uh, 60 millimeters here, and the width is 45 millimeters. And then you get uh, 0 0.11 newton per square millimeters. That is the static load on the isolator. And then finally you have to compare your calculated uh, static load with uh, your maximum static load. And in this case 0 0.11 is smaller than 0 0.17, which is okay then. If not, you have to increase the stiffness of your isolator or increase the area of the cube of the isolator. The closer you dare to have your static load to the maximum load uh, on your isolator, the better it will work and the natural frequency will be lower. But uh, what is then the natural frequency? If you have a mass and uh, a spring here, a rubber band, and you put some energy, it will uh, start oscillating with a uh, frequency, uh, the system's natural frequency. If you wouldn't have any damping in the rubber band, uh, the, the ball would just continue oscillating forever. To calculate your natural uh, frequency, you can use the following uh, formulas. And uh, uh, when you know the natural frequency, you g can get a hang of uh, how well your isolator will work and, uh, and for which frequencies. Input to the formulas are the mass load on the isolator and the dynamic uh, E module. Uh, the mass load is here 25 kilogram and uh, this will get the result 14.6 uh, hertz. At this uh, frequency, 14.6 Hz, the isolation of the floating floor will be very bad and the vibration level will be increased. But uh, in this case, uh, I have no sound energy there so and vibration levels, uh, so it won't be any problem. Uh, if you multiply with uh, 1.4, 14.6 Hz, you will uh, get an idea where where the isolator will start to work here uh, above 20 hertz and if you have a computer program you can uh, calculate how uh, well your isolator will work for a certain uh, frequency for example at 14.6 uh, hertz uh, the natural frequency you will uh, increase your vibration levels with uh, up to 20 dB, so not good, but uh, it will start work at 20 Hz. And uh, for example, at uh, 100 Hz, you will get uh, a decrease by uh, 30 dB, for example. But it's not uh, necessary to have this kind of a program, it's just great. But uh, you, you will get a long way calculating the static load and the natural frequency. Let's get back to building the floating floor. Uh, we need to glue the 
isolator to the wood. And of course, don't use any nails or screws. Um, Then we turn the wooden frame around, so the floor will stand on the isolators. And uh, then uh, we put some chipboards on the wooden joints. Uh, the chipboard is 22 millimeters thick. And you can also add some plasterboards if you like. <laughs> to prevent the annoying no noise to spread around the room here. Or if I'm going to build like a room uh, above the floating floor with uh, walls and a ceiling, uh, then of course the walls have to be standing on the floating floor. If you're going to build a floating floor for a, a more low frequency noise, I would uh, suggest some uh, changes. Uh, I would increase the height of the floating floor because uh, you will get a, a resonance between the floor and the concrete here. And uh, with that resonance, uh, you will get very low isolation so I would at least uh, double the height here to 150 millimeters or something and then I would uh, increase the, the weight of the floor uh, the mass you can use some concrete plates and, and some or some other materials that uh, has a lot of mass. That's good. And then I also, the third thing, I would uh, use some mineral wool uh, beneath here to increase the acoustical, to increase the sound isolation. That's the three things. Okay. Here we can see an amplifier uh, transmitting some vibrations uh, through the floor and into the neighbor and to the neighbor's ear with some noise there. And uh, then we see the solution here, the floating floor, and uh, it's quiet and nice at the neighbor. Thank you for watching.